base for transport business, the railways of Britain, once thought doomed by progress in the motorway age, are right back in the running. The lines across the face of the nation that pioneered railways are changing. And so are the engines. The vintage locos of a dying era are gradually being run off the tracks into retirement. By 1972, the last of the 18,000 steam locos of British railways will have gone to make way for the more efficient but less romantic diesels and overhead electrification. This schoolboy's delight, the Flying Scotsman, goes out with a bang, not a whimper. Its new owner, a railway enthusiast, paid £3,000 to save the 40-year-old giant from the scrapyard. Back in 1928, it made the first non-stop run from London to Edinburgh in eight and a quarter hours. Now a full turnout of reporters and photographers to honour the veteran's last departure from King's Cross. With fire in his belly, the old Scotsman became a legend in its own time. Today's Scotsman is a 3,300 horsepower diesel capable of 100 miles an hour that makes London to Edinburgh in six hours flat and pulling a heavier train. On many routes, diesels are saving 10 to 15 minutes in the hour. And they are coming fast off the production lines. Last year, 1,000 went into service. They cost more to build than the old steam locos, around 90,000 pounds for a mainline express. But they're cheaper to operate because they can be run more intensively. One diesel can do more than twice the work of the old steam loco. It all adds up to a technical revolution. And at the heart of it, drivers like Stan Bagley. For them, it's back to school, to learn new skills, to convert from the grimy footplate world of yesterday to the press button tidiness of today. One week on theory in the classroom, one week with a stationary diesel, then it's out on the road for practice. Many drivers miss the personal touch that was needed to coax the best out of the old steamers but not many would want to go back to them, and they're agreed that diesels are a lot easier to handle. For new trains, new tracks to give a faster, smoother, quieter ride. Tracks already welded into lengths of up to 300 feet, with sleepers and rails joined at the depot. Tracks with concrete sleepers in place of the old timber kind, and rubber pads to cushion the vibration. Long welded track like this is being laid at the rate of 300 miles a year. But it'll be a long time before passengers no longer hear the monotonous clickety-click of wheels on rails. There are 48,000 miles of track in Britain. To ease the flow of fast traffic, flyovers are going up, like this 700-yard stretch at Bletchley, once a bottleneck responsible for many an example of that old railway bugbear, the late arrival. With their higher average speeds and faster acceleration, the diesels are helping the railways win a new reputation for being on time. And this calls also for new methods of signalling. Power-operated boxes like this at Tolleton near York cover longer stretches of line. Coloured lights that beam through fog and falling snow are replacing the old semaphore system. And the signalman of today no longer has the barman's job of pulling on long levers. The turn of a switch sets up miles of route, signals and points. This box does the work of several of the old type, and it's foolproof. There's another safety device for the driver, an automatic warning system. If the distant signal shows clear, a bell sounds in the cab. If it's a caution, a siren sounds, and if the driver doesn't acknowledge the warning, the brakes go on automatically. Nowhere in the world can the extent of the railway revolution be seen more clearly than at York. Here in the Railway Museum, they've preserved a line of locos going back more than 140 years. Here are colliery engines and ancient expresses that steam their way into the history of a nation. 
Flyers from the pioneering days when the race was on to win business and competence and to open up exciting new routes from London to Scotland. Even before the turn of the century, one proud flyer charged the 80 miles from York to Newcastle in 79 minutes. Today, tracks as well as locos are passing into the limbo of railway history. Under a vast modernisation plan, scores of stations are likely to go the way of this one at Westerham, Kent. Stations that become memorials to a bygone age, or like sets for a new production of the Ghost Train. Here at Carlisle are the mothballed ironclads of yesterday, their fires drawn forever. A fate worse than shunting awaits them, for each represents more than a hundred tons of scrap, when the yards can get round to dealing with it. But some old locos never die, nor do they fade away, certainly not on the Bluebell Line. When British Railways closed the Sussex Branch Line in 1958, a group of railway enthusiasts reopened part of it between Sheffield Park and Horsted Canes for weekend working. Now, it's a tourist attraction turning in a profit. But progress too has its bright side. It's not only steam that's going, but smoke and soot grime stations. With the emphasis on high-speed, non-stop services between cities, the railmen are moving into the world of the image makers. They talk of fast trains, smooth trains, trains that run to time. It's possible now to ride in trains and keep your clothes clean. For the long-suffering passengers who make a thousand million train journeys a year, the revolution has come none too soon. For the railmen, a new pride in prestige trains with glamorous names. The Red Dragon, the Elizabethan, the Cornish Riviera Express and a host of others. And already the next generation of locos is in the minds of the backroom boys. Revolutionary new machines that'll make the latest diesels as out of date as steam engines are today. This is the linear induction motor developed to match the university for the railways board. A simple electric motor that runs on a continuous metal strip set between the rails. It accelerates to 30 miles an hour in 65 feet and makes 200 miles an hour trains a possibility. Meanwhile, it's the diesel that's making the running and helping to haul the railways out of the red. 